as, quote, having a booth, um, there's really not a great word for it. So we'll call, we'll, sometimes we'll talk about table and sometimes we'll talk about booth, but they're the same thing. And uh, tabling is one of the most critical and basic of the political skills. Uh, and probably everybody in here has done it. Uh, but the problem is we, we, it's so basic we often take it for granted and we don't do it intentionally. And because of that, uh, many, many people are out there spending a lot of time and a lot of money doing this and they may not be getting as much uh, out of it as they should. So we're here to give you some tips and tricks to help make sure your table is as effective as it possibly can be. And your name is? Introduce yourself. <laughs> My name is Lauren Doherty. And I'm Andy Burns. We both work for the National Party doing various different things. Uh, so, go. Okay. Uh, show of hands, who in here has done a table or booth? Almost everybody, right? Okay. But I didn't know the term table. Hang on, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, Andy and Lauren are there, so I'm gonna go to it anyway, but I wasn't sure until uh, you told me what table meant. Yes, yeah, so it, it's a confusing term, and, and so we talk about tabling intentionally. Uh, we want to do it intentionally, and, and have it, having a booth intentionally just isn't a good so yeah. intentionally is, you know, is what, we're, what we've got. So, um, a lot of people just show up, you know, say, hey, we've got a booth at our county fair, state fair, whatever function it is, and they think they kind of just stop there. Hey, we got our signage up. People, we're automatically, like, flying the flag and something's going to happen magically. That's just your first step. You really need to make sure what, what's your metrics, how many contacts are you going to at the end of the day? Are you raising money? Are you breaking even at least on this thing so it's sustainable? Uh, make sure you have goals and you're meeting those goals with your thing, not just, hey, we, we went to that place. Well, show me the real hard results. So, have you guys, what have you guys seen or done that you thought was successful at a yard reaches booth? Any success stories or certain things that have worked? One of the things we do is we offer a, like a gift card to a local coffee house, and you gotta gauge your audience. Sometimes coffee house works, sometimes other things work, to, for people that take the poll, or take the quiz. And then we use that quiz thing as a kind of a draw and try to have two people, one that can actually work the table and one that kind of pulls people in and works through the quiz with them. Um, that's been real helpful for us. Okay. Others? Rob. I was going to say, I, was appreciate, uh, I appreciate you mentioning uh, metrics because I hadn't thought of it. The weekend after I announced my uh, candidacy for the congressional seat uh, in the panhandle here, uh, we had a canopy and a booth in Panama City, our nearest uh, town of any size. Yep. Didn't have a single piece of literature. It, you know, we weren't ready. Uh, we, we grabbed some LP uh, rack cards, as a matter of fact, just to stick it down there and so on. There was still a benefit because we met a lot of people. Oh, we're going to have a libertarian running for Congress? We never have had that in this part of the, the state. Uh, so it was a success from a contact perspective. And I did pick up two volunteers from the 25 people that uh, interviewed over the course of the court. My booth. But I never even thought of until you just said, it, huh, we gotta get some metrics and goals. So for me, I think what this is doing is, is providing some context and framework to make the next outreach event more successful. And but, Rob and John, uh, when you did these booths, did you collect people's contact information? Yes, we had a sheet to do that with. Uh, we also had rap cards and business cards that we could uh, hand out to you. Uh, Excellent. Rob? Uh, I had, I was collecting business, several people had business cards and no, I did not have an attendance sheet and I will not make that mistake again. Yeah. All right. Any other experiences? I guess my obstacle I've always found doing fair and stuff around least in Montana is the fact that most fair boards want you to have a $1 million dollar liability policy and a lot of groups and organizations can't afford to pay that so, uh, so evidently you're not going to get a table or do anything if you can't afford the, the insurance. And I'm just wondering, you know, if anybody has any suggestions during the convention, come see me about some reasonable alternatives uh, for that, because that's something that I, keep, I brought up year after year, and you never quite seem to get a, a good answer, you know. Well, in different, different states and different municipalities and different events have different rules, and that's a great point, because you have to know what the rules are and find a way to work with them and sometimes that's that's pretty difficult. Other other folks, things you found particularly successful with booths? Well in Georgia what we found you have to show up to the same event multiple years in a row. Right. First year, probably the first three you're not gonna gain much traction. 
Um, at Pride, especially at the Atlanta Pride, I'm down in Georgia, uh, after a few years of providing the world's smallest political quiz, even if we know they're a hardcore Democrat, they'll still show up annually just to take the quiz again. Um, so now we're kind of just expected to be there. So that's how we're building up our brand at different events, especially at gun shows as well. That's great. And that can be a really important goal, too. Um, so as Andy said, you need to have your goals. You need to know what they are. And don't try to have too many goals, because if you try to have too many goals, you're, you're not going to perform very well on all of them. So fundraising one of your goals, uh, then, then perhaps uh, the world's smallest political quiz may not be. If um, getting people's contact info is one of your goals, then maybe fundraising should also be, and maybe it shouldn't. Uh, I think it's, it's, it depends on the specific events you're doing and your team and the stuff you have, uh, which leads us to the stuff. Would anybody like to come, maybe two volunteers, and arrange a booth, sample booth? Judy, give it a shot. John, would you like to come with her? I know I laughed just a From which we're from this side. So, so any of this stuff on this table. Just and you have a plate, you have this. And there are easels here if you choose to use them. Just do whatever you feel is. Here, I'll, I'll open it so you can look around. Thank you. Um, so we're set these in the front. If they're these, are these floor easels or just? They should be standing. Okay, so then these can go on, on them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ideally, you'd be able to set something up high in front of the two. Yeah, okay. a fourth of the air with the party, county party and mm -hmm. the symbol and so forth on it. Can you talk it through with the group so they can hear what you're saying? You're saying the the one of the things we did when we first started doing tables in Arkansas, so we worked with two groups. One is the Libertarian Party from the village, or retirement community, and that's something Judy and I were working on setting up. We set up our website, had business cards printed, and one rack card on that organization. We also got a banner for the tables we do that's a real visible thing with our name on it, has the old Uncle Sam logo on the side. Uh, for the county party, we use the state libertarian party symbol and then some red, white, and blue with the county party's name on it. We put that across the front of the table. If we're in a location where we can put something up behind the table, we try to get something there high enough so that we don't block it as we stand in front. When we do the world's smallest political field, we'll set it up on one corner of the table. Uh, it allows us then to spread our smaller materials across there and keep somebody, you know, visible and open, able to talk to people while the other person is working with whoever's doing the quiz. Uh, we always have a donations can on there. We always have a uh, sheet people can sign if they'd like more information. Uh, and then we usually try to keep the materials minimal to the point that the table doesn't look cluttered or things are blocked on it. So we'll have the rack card for that group, we'll have a business card uh, people can take, and then we'll have maybe three or at most four of the uh, pamphlets, some of the national party pamphlets or our card for the other group down in the city. Um, so far we haven't had anything other than a few bumper stickers I actually had left over that we sell. We try to stay away from the t-shirts because we don't have a lot of money to invest and we have different sizes and things like that. But all the food, Lauren and Andy are one of the best things to try to sell on. We always have two people at the table. Partly you need that because you're going to be doing breaks and you always got to have somebody there while they're going to drop the bathroom. But mainly so that uh, one person can be engaged with people that want to talk about things while the other's still there to help people work the, uh, uh, work the political clues. And that's our main draw. That was that main draw. Uh, we do offer that gift card and we tailor that to the type of audience that we want to handle. We do a Hot Springs Jazz Festival. Hot Springs, Arkansas draws in people all over. We have a day one uh, table at that and we use the a popular coffee shop type places because it's a younger crowd. Uh, Judy, yeah. Well, I'm looking a little here at what's available. Um, there's the clothes and the color. When we're looking at color, we're looking at the gray and the gold that are colors. So that's what we want to stay with. There's other shirts here. They may have the color, but they dilute the message. So I wouldn't have them. Um, the, the, the items that are related to it. If you're in a situation that you can sell, that's one thing. 
We're finding in Arkansas we can't sell because of our sales tax laws. Our state is horrible at, at scrunching down on, on being able to sell. So we're better off that if we did something like this, I would do it as a, a drawing or something like that. But even that, um, with the gambling laws, um, Arkansas is really tough. I found that in other organizations of the Libertarian Party. I'm not going to open them up, but I would definitely leave two or three of a couple of the different things out. Um, there's several sign-ups. I would leave two or three, but I have it in a couple places. So if there's a group of people here, then I could still have them signing up over here as well. One of the other things, I keep plastic, these large plastic uh, uh, bins, rubber made bins, and I keep everything in there organized, and then we have a cart that we can put it on. So one person can actually unload their trunk, bring it up, and get the table set up with the stuff. And then after the event, it kind of goes in sloppy at the end because you're in a hurry to close down. It's a matter of cleaning it all up, getting it ready, keeping your inventory, and being ready for the next one. Great. Perfect. Thank you both. They did a great job. Anything you would change at all, or any well, what do you all suggestions? Think? I mean, if there was any way to get a few more items that are on the right. table, sort of vertical, mm -hmm. that would be a help, just because it sort of, again, makes it stand out from a distance mm -hmm. that there's stuff there, other than, you know, a few folded t-shirts or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe even, you know, one of the t-shirts you could like drape over the front to show the graphics off a little bit or something like that, but I think it looks great. One of the things you can use for that are these wrap card holders that will actually stand them up and face your audience. You can also get holders, the transparent holders that will do eight and a half by 11. And so for like our contest rules, we'll put that on there. Uh, when we hold the county meeting in a library or something, I actually put our county uh, party symbol and name and so forth on that and direct it out so people know what's in there. So no, those are pretty cheap to, to get a hold of. You can also buy a little um, cardboard that will tape to the back of an eight and a half by eleven. So if you print something out on cardstock and then put the little easel back there, and these are disposable little easels, very cheap. You can buy twelve of them for five bucks. Like they that. have like little plastic ones too that you can like slide in whatever you want, yes. sort of swap it in and out. That are very useful. So lots of different options, um, but the key with all of that is just always try to make sure your stuff matches and looks polished and professional. You know, we, we in the Libertarian Party, our, our detractors like to claim that we're a ragtag uh, and quote mom's basement kind of uh, crowd and uh, we must overcome that uh, because that, uh, that is not the stereotype we want to uh, further with these tables. We want to present very polished, professional images, all of these tables are one of Ways to do it. And uh, one, one of the key elements of that is is the matching colors. Okay, we have this new logo. Whether you love it or hate it, doesn't matter so much. Just have the stuff that matches. If your state has different branding, and, and Andy will speak to this in a minute, he's very involved with the yep. state's branding. So every state has different branding. Sometimes even the county party has different branding. Um, the county party I'm a part of, I encourage them to adopt the national branding simply because the national party has all these materials that then we can use for our county party. Uh, but my state party has different branding, so you can make various decisions accordingly. Or if your campaign is choosing their branding, you can say, okay, I, I want it to match the national party, or I don't, or I want it to match my state party, or whatever. But whatever you choose, don't mix and match branding. It will fall flat on its face. Take, take the colors, go with them, be consistent. Whichever and branding you choose, yeah, take it. Don't try to mix mix these two together. And the National Party does have all these resources that you can find on lpstore.org. Uh, but Andy, so we encourage you to obviously use this branding. Uh, it just adds overall flow to to the whole party. Uh, helps everyone, state and uh, national. One thing I just I would change is always whatever you think you put on there, always put less, even less than that, uh, and keep it really simple for people. But you have multiple sign sheets, so that's great. Um, that's a, the major action item you want. You want a lot of context from this event, so let's make sure those sign sheets are out there and that's the first thing. You know, you don't want them back there, you want them right up front. Um, but do I want to join today? Uh, let's just get the contact first. We can always do this uh, email or phone call or we can do that next, but joining is at the table is going to be a little tougher to get. You're just mainly going to get the contact. So you can keep these handy, but I'd keep them, you know, probably back here. Then if you have a conversation with someone, say like, hey, glad you're supportive. Can you join us? Uh, so, 
I'd probably delete this and, you know, pick one. Like, do you want the quiz or do you want an informational record or we got another one? Pick which one you want to do for your purpose, but I wouldn't have two. Like, make it simple. Like, okay, I got sign-up sheet and the quiz. So that's the action item you're going to do. Take the quiz. Oh, you're a libertarian? Okay, you sign up. Step one, step two, right? Step three could be donate. But let's get them to do the first two very important ones because if you don't get the contact information, you're not going to be able to reestablish contact. You usually need seven points of contact before they actually are truly supportive of your organization. So other than that, uh, t-shirts, we don't have the apparatus to uh, hang them, but if you had that, you would probably hung them back or put them on something back here. Um, so other than that, you know, I would keep it like that. Fewer bumper stickers is good. If you have 200 bumper stickers sitting out, people are going to think, oh gosh, nobody wants their bumper stickers. I don't either. If you have five, then it seems like a scarce resource and people will want it and you just put more out as you need to. Um, same with the shirts. Don't have a stack of shirts this high. Same principle applies on really all of this. And I wanted to, I had the, this pad out for a reason. Okay, so I'll pass it around so you all can see. So the printing quality on this versus this, you can look at the, the grays, look at the yellow. So these were from two different printers, and you'll see it's a different quality, and this one just kind of looks icky, right? So when you order these things, be discerning, be discriminating. Does it look polished and professional? Does it look icky? <laughs> Compare it with the other materials that you have or that you've seen online. This one matches this. This one does not match this. So just because you have it or get it doesn't mean you should necessarily use it. Um, and that's another great thing about ordering them from lpstore.org. You've already had somebody else weed through that. Uh, but you can go to your own printer, your own local printer or Kinko's or whomever and print a lot of this stuff. But I'll pass these around so you can see because it, it is important to be really discriminated about that. And back to the, the contact sheet. If somebody walks up and they see a blank contact sheet and they think, oh, no one else has given them their contact info. I won't either. So if you write down one or two fake contacts on there, and just remember that the first two are fake, so you're, you don't end up sending them emails, fake addresses or something, um, that will make it look like other people are doing it, therefore I should too. It's, it's peer pressure in the, in the most natural sense. Uh, Robert, and then I know, actually let me come back to you because you had your hand yeah. it. Um, I was just going to say something that we have had success with is like um, targeted uh, giveaways. We, for example, we're locally going after a lot of younger voters in the Charleston area. Uh, so what we did was we printed up koozies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like something that resonates with that demographic, you know, and then when, when they do express interest, we give them that and we challenge them to leave their koozie at a friend's house or to give it to someone else. And when you want another one, come back and get another one, yeah. you know? But it's sort of one of those things like, you know, someone else wanted to do water bottles and it's like, okay, well they drink the water, they throw the bottle out. You know, there's nothing left of what you just yeah. gave to somebody. Yeah. So we tried to come up with something that people want to have and reuse and take with them, leave it on their boat, you know, in, the, in a large boating community or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, and same token, we'll use them like when we have our meetups and stuff and everybody will just have one in hand and if somebody's like, oh, that's cool, let me have one. Mm -hmm. So like, here, take this one, you know, and then get another. So it's, it's really a, been a nice way to sort of have a giveaway that people really want versus a giveaway that people are like, great, I'll take this, I'm going to throw it in the trash as soon as you turn your back. You know? How much do they cost a piece, do you? Gotta... We got them through, it was an online site, and I want to say that we got 150 of them for like, like, Sixty dollars or something like that. That's so great. it was like under, it was like around two dollars a piece once we got up to like over a hundred. So we decided to go even a little bit more and, and you know started with that. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's got the, the porcupine on one side with our Facebook address and all that uh -huh. uh, for the local group. Um, and then on the other side, it's got like a graphic of like a girl in a bikini taking a selfie that says the NSA has all your selfies, you know? So something, <laughs> again, targeting young people that they think is cool, you know? Yeah. So, but at the same time, gets our message across. Very so. nice. Great idea. Rob, you were next. Uh, I was, you, you addressed it, the, the uh, uh, phony names and addresses. We, uh, we've only done it once, but we have three uh, uh, people in the neighborhood who have agreed to actually use their names. And it, it's no different in our, uh, somebody uh, down the street said, Rob, that's the same as salting the pot. When you have a tip jar 
And you think you always put a few ones in there so that people know that other people have contributed and they're more likely to do it. I think it's exactly the same with this sign up sheet. Just yeah. say, yep. Same thing with money and money yeah. lists. Yeah. Do both salt or see them. Andy, do you have anything? Oh, I was just going to say that there is a sign sheet going around. Um, what performs a little bit better, there's another version. Because legibility is always an issue, you know, if they're not, you know, usually you don't have a high tech system of an iPad or something, which some uh, organizations do that. This solves that on paper form, so it just blocks, making it very easily. Because otherwise, you're, you know, you're going to an event, you want to maximize your return. If, you know, 30, 40, 50% are, I can't read, illegible. You're, you know, you're wasting someone's time, your volunteers' time. So, just this just maximizes uh, the validity of your contacts, um, and just an easy way to make sure you're uh, getting the most out of everyone that comes to your booth. So, yep. We're sitting around stickers that say LP, and they're about this big. Laura, would you hold one up? Yeah. So, what's the uh, what's the utility of having stickers in your booth? Well, Pride, everybody wants to wear stickers. So yes. we've been searching for stickers for quite some time. For a while there, they were actually wearing the Libertarian bumper stickers. So having all of those would be quite useful. And, the, and bumper stickers are much more expensive to manufacture yep. than these. So if you have these, they, they don't cost really much of anything. But you avoid people taking your bumper stickers to wear. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, what else? What else? What's the other benefit? You have walking billboards. So all these people circulating at the event that have these on, and every kid will walk, and then we'll be walking around. And if you get them on grown-ups, all the better. Um, it, it turns everybody into a walking billboard. Uh, I've seen people put them on water bottles. I mentioned that, so disposable water bottles. It's a little more expensive, um, but you can get stickers that are in a shape that would go somewhat around the label area, and especially if it's a very warm summer day. Uh, that that can be an effective thing, but again, it is more expensive than some other things, and people do throw the bottle away. Uh, so that's something to consider. But having stickers uh, is a very useful. These, these are, you know, you could make these into stickers, buttons as well, uh, either way you want to go. But these are the same thing, walking billboards. We've used these at our uh, various state fair and other uh, pride, and all the pride. Pride's obviously very uh, popular with that one. Uh, so. Again, we actually sold these. Uh, you know, that's one thing that you got to be careful of. You know, you can drain your bank account and say, "Let's like give away all this stuff," but your people value it. That's, that's it's key to draw the line and say, "Okay, you know, sh should we put a price on this or should we give it away free?" My line is usually, you know, if, if it's not like dirt cheap, like stickers put on people, that's obviously a giveaway. Uh, Buttons, we do these for two bucks. We raised like 6,000 bucks at a 12 day event just with buttons. The rest was with t shirts. I mean, you, you were getting buttons left and right. If someone values or is supportive of you, they'll be happy to give you, oh, two bucks. I understand that actually costs something. Someone made that. Uh, so that's what we do. Otherwise, if you give them away for free, one, you know, we did another method which I would not do, but we've tested it. You know, uh, you get a button if you sign up. You know, sign up on our sheet and you get a button. Uh, you're, you're not getting super supportive people. I mean, they they kind of like the button, or they just want a button. You know, on Pride, everyone wants, I want to put something on, but they don't really want to hear from you as an email, maybe. So you're just kind of making your list a little dirty. Uh, so I would, I, would, I would basically, you know, make sure you're getting quality contacts. You want a lot, but they also need to be quality. So no one that's going to be supportive of you will say, ah, I can't give two bucks. I would say it's about 10% might. That'd be the max. Uh, the rest, ninety percent would say, "Sure, I can do that." Yeah, I was just gonna say regarding those buttons. I mean, also again, thinking of who your target's gonna be. You know, the Rainbow Porcupine's obviously a great one for Pride Fest, something like that. You know, Don't Spy Me might be great for gun shows. You know, but maybe not so much the Rainbow Porcupine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so you know, like you're saying, limit what you're offering at your booth or at your table, um, and think about who your audience is going to be for that day and provide them with. The appropriate thing versus exactly. uh, yeah. yeah we went to a mayday festival and we, you know the most of these are popular uh, uh, it's in minnesota so it was you know kind of these are all none of them are you know hardcore you know there's not a gun one on here so uh, we wouldn't have used that at uh, this more liberal um, mayday uh, festival but they all appear uh, appeal to those people so. well and, and uh, going back to the topic of 
uh, dirtying up your list. So we talked a little bit about giveaways. Um, and different states have different rules, so make sure whatever you're doing in your state's legal, you don't, you don't want to get in trouble for, for something silly like that. But in some states, you can have a, a jar and put in contact info and then take out one and it's drawing, right? You, you draw a name for a, for a prize or something. Now, you need to be intentional about that. So you can, so some organizations will say, okay, I want to spend $150 to put together this mega basket of stuff for this drawing and then I think that'll lure people in to putting their contact info into the bucket. Maybe it will or maybe it won't because some people will be like, oh, there's only one drawing from one thing. The probability of my getting in is so low, I'm not going to bother to fill this thing out. Uh, so maybe it's better to have multiple drawings for smaller things. Okay, and you can think about well, what kind of object would appeal in this group. So you want to be thoughtful about the group that you're, you're going to be with. Um, but also, what object is going to be appealing to the people that you want to sign up? If you say, okay, um, we're libertarians, we're all about gold and silver, let's give out a silver coin. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. However, you're going to have a whole lot of people that aren't useful for you put their name down for this drawing for the silver coin. Is that what you want or is it not? Would you be better off uh, with a signed book by Gary Johnson? I don't know. Is that going to get you the info that you want more so than the coin? Is it going to get you an, um, enough people to compensate for the bigger number you might get for the coin? I don't know. These are questions you have to ask for your specific organization, your specific cause, and the specific event you're doing. Uh, because there is no universal answer on that. It's just things to consider carefully and do intentionally. Uh, you know, talking about things that are bringing people in, not sure if we've covered this uh, yet, but just making sure that you have you know, salespeople that are out there that know how to uh, engage with people. Uh, a lot of times, you know, some people aren't totally made for outreach stuff. They may be the person that does sell stuff and takes the cash and does that kind of thing, or is behind the scenes and organizes volunteers to get to the event. Uh, but make sure you don't know, use the common rules of uh, communications. You know, listen more than you talk. Don't you know? Don't talk their head off. Um, I'll show you a YouTube video or send you the link to remember where to go. But it's a great overview of here's what not to do. You know, don't give people an, here's Austrian economics. Here's here's all this stuff that you need to know. You know. Don't cram it down their throat. If they're interested, they'll get to that. But that's many layers down from where you need to start. Always start at a very, I'd say, superficial level and let them work down. Uh, don't overburden people with a ton of information that might not be appealing to them. Listen to them. Ask them, you know, what's their issues? What are they really? Why, you know, why are you interested in the Libertarian Party? Get some information first before you offer a solution. Just use those common. Uh, communication uh, tactics to actually give a solution that really matters to them rather than something that you care about and they might not care at all about. Um, what? Rob? I confess to be one of, being one of those people who slips up a lot, there's too much cramming down the throat and so on. But what I wanted to comment on is just what strikes me, what I'm looking at. You're two large, very large libertarian signs. I really like the I vote libertarian. To me, it's far more friendly. I'm, I'm thinking of it It's in front of a, a booth, a canopy, and so on. There's nothing wrong with the libertarian banner, which is really what it is. But uh, for me, I vote it kind of says, hey, this is where I'm at. Come on, let's talk. So I just thought I'd offer that observation. I Somehow i got to get that. So Especially I'm, in an election year, because yeah. this is the action we want out of people. Yeah. We want them to identify this and think it's a good thing and, that, and think they can be part of it, but what we really want the, their action to be is voting. Uh, so I think that's that's uh, very important. Um, also, on the topic of people and welcoming them in, I yep. wanted to throw out, okay, so so what is more welcoming if, so Andy, would you have a seat? Yeah, let's, let's start a booth the runway. Okay. Right, we're at our uh, county fair here, and uh, we're really ready for this new event. Uh, yeah. I think we should be pretty uh, successful at this it's, one. It's so exciting. And, uh, the bad, the bad Did you hear about Gary Johnson last night? I can't oh believe what he said. I just yeah. can't believe it. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, we need to be drinking on our coffee and leaving coffee cups everywhere. Dirty glasses, you know, trash. Right. Um, I mean, we'll get some paper. Um, exactly. Yeah. Hey, so yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, no chairs. No uh, chairs. Because okay. if you put the chairs there, your volunteers are going to use them. They're going to get tired of standing because tabling is a lot of work. Your feet get very tired. If the chairs are there, your volunteers are going to use them. Now, obviously, if somebody's disabled or has a medical condition, that's a whole different story. But assuming everybody's good to be on their feet, don't have chairs. Andy? Yeah. Okay. Rob, do you want to? Mosey on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. What were you asking? Just Mosey. Oh, I should have. Okay. How are you Good doing afternoon. today? Oh, hi. Uh, Would you like a sticker? You bet. Watch over here. Have you heard about candidate so and so? Well, actually, I have. Are, are that person's right. Yeah, oh, yes. He, he, he's our libertarian nominee for president. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, uh, I've heard a lot. Is he going to be coming to, the, to your booth? Oh, we, we do hope so. Tomorrow, I'll just out by at 2 p.m. I'm coming okay. back tomorrow. I'm <laughs> delighted. Well, thanks very much. And I, Would well, you like to take a quiz? Yeah, I'd like one of your stickers. Or, yeah, but I guess I've got a sticker. I got it. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you, Rob. Reach, reaching out, to, sure. Yeah, so if you have people out front, it's much easier for them to engage. And I kid you not, my first interaction with the National Party, they were tabling at an event, a national event, and two, two, two people were sitting behind the table, all slouched down, complaining about various things to each other. And this was my first interaction with the National Party. I thought, we've got to change this, guys. So here we are yep. trying to be the change we want to see in the world, and we want you guys to be part of it. Um, if, if you're out and engaging and positive, and you, you keep the trash off the table, very key, keep the trash off the table, uh, hand out stickers, be friendly, and chit chat, not Eliminate it. politics. Uh, yeah, and, and really, the closer you are to people, so say if this was a road and people are coming down uh, your little path here, literally, the closer you are, the better. Um, if, if there's a distance and they have to walk five feet closer, if they're too far out, 10 feet, that means they, people don't like to have to commit to anything, really. They just want to kind of check you out and kind of look by. So if they're right there, it's hard for them to say no if they're literally like right here. And I can say, hey, do you want to take a quiz or whatever it is, uh, or hand out a sticker? Uh, but if they're way out there, it's like you can't you can't talk to them out there. It's you're, it's like oh bye. One of the things we did at the in the retirement community to pull people in is they always like food, so we had a bowl of those uh, wrapped candies on the table, and a lot of people would come close, they'd look, and then they would come over because they have the candy there yeah. and get a chance to say hello and talk to them. Right, and, and you do need to have an eye catcher. Sorry, I'm kind of just uh, jumping around on some of this, but. Whatever your booth is, whatever your, you know, it's great to have, hey, we're libertarian, this is what we are, and uh, every organization has that. That's pretty standard. But what's going to draw you, you know, what's really going to draw people in? Uh, so there, there's some of these signs, uh, like the legalize it OHP, and we had some, uh, uh, another one on the very top. But some, uh, freedom on a stick, obviously Minnesotans would get that, because uh, everything's on a stick at the spare corn dogs and everything else. Uh, but <coughs> issues, you know, like marijuana legalization, it's, it's medical in Minnesota, but why isn't it legal? Tons of people were coming up to us because they really care about that and they were wondering why isn't it legal? It's a popular sport, but uh, two part, other two parties aren't uh, passing that. All these other issues, that, that's what, and the shirts do the same thing with the signs together, same messaging. It draws them in and tells them, okay, I think I can identify with that issue. That gives me a reason to go to the Libertarian Party. Otherwise, it's, you know, if, if you just have your standard, we're Libertarian, Okay, you might get someone that's kind of leaning your way, but you're not going to get as broad of a spectrum of people that, you know, it's like it's a caucus model. If, if they agree with on a, you on an issue very strongly, they could still vote for you. You know, they don't have to agree with you 100%. Uh, um. Don't go telling them they're wrong if they disagree with us on some topic. Um, you know, the purity test <laughs> is not wise at, at the, the outreach booths. Um, there's time and place for, for pushing people a little further on some of these topics, but that this is not the time and place. Get their contact info, follow up with them later, and then walk them through it. Now, I'm following up with them. I've seen a lot of organizations, including my county party, who put a lot of time and money into a booth, and they collect some names, and then what happens with those names? And then do you look polished or professional if, if you never follow up? Not so much. And then there, there's a, a timeline on that, too. So if you go a week, go a month, go a year, and you haven't followed up with them, is it okay then to be like, oh, hey, guys, we're having a meeting tomorrow. Come by and, and uh, join us for pizza or something. Uh, by that time, you, you, you look really disorganized, and we do not want that. So the best thing would be you go home that night, 
you sit down at your computer, and maybe you've already typed out the email because you know ahead of time that you're going to be tired and exhausted after having done this booth for, for however many hours. You have this email, on this template all put together. All you have to do is put BCC and then type in all these addresses. Go home and do that. Send it. Just say thank you for coming by our booth. It was a pleasure to speak with you. We hope that you uh, learned a little bit more about libertarianism. Our next meeting is, and make sure you've got one lined up. Make sure you've got one lined up. And it needs to be a really informal thing. No business meetings. Do not invite first-time people to a business meeting. <laughs> it will scare them off faster than anything. Uh, say, say that uh, your local group's getting together for, for pizza at the local club or whatever. Something that's not intimidating and that's at a convenient time and hopefully within a week or so after the event, uh, after your boothing, um, so it's still fresh in their minds. Uh, follow up with them or you will lose them and all of your hard work will go mostly down the drain. And then after that, you need to maintain that information. And some of our groups have great databases and some of them do not. Uh, but whatever you do, even if it's an Excel spreadsheet file, make sure you take the contact info, put it in there, and make sure you continue to use it over time. Because that is how you're really going to get the bang for your buck out of all your hard work with the tabling. Yeah. On top of that, make sure, you know, when you're at the event, take pictures, post it to social media, uh, have something on your website about the event that you were there. You know, people go into your site and they see old articles or, oh, they aren't doing anything. I think it's, it's, it just looks like a brochure when you go to their website and it's nothing like, oh, is there real people actually at this, or is it just two guys, you know? You, you gotta make sure that it looks lively and active. That really can help your fundraising as well. Uh, we've had it where large donors, you can see it if they like it, you're like, oh, well, that's nice that they liked it because you know they're a really large donor and they give you money because they see oh it's just a reminder and you want to keep that fresh in their mind that yes i've given to them and i'll keep giving to them because i can uh because i can see tangible things that they're doing uh if, if you keep it as hey you know if you don't give them a real reason on why they want to donate or they don't you never really tout your successes and you don't post them so everyone sees them and you don't send out your email saying this is where we're going this is where we've been it's going to be tough to, to sustain that and get people to keep supporting you. So. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, did it fall? You've heard that saying? Well, if a libertarian puts a lot of work into something, but then they don't put it on social media and in the e-newsletter and so on, did it actually happen? You know, I, I know we have so many people out there working really, really hard, doing a whole lot of really great things for the Libertarian Party, but often we're, we're not so good at displaying all that hard work. Um, so what Andy's talking about, you need photos, too. So, so make sure you deliberately have somebody who will take photos of your booth, a lot of them, so that you make sure you get some really good ones. Because you know, when you're taking pictures, especially of people, you, you end up with weird expressions on their faces or, or you know, caught in an awkward movement. You want to have good ones. So make sure you take a lot of pictures. Now that we have digital cameras all over the place, this isn't hard. You just have to intentionally do it. Everything about this seminar is about being intentional. Do it deliberately. Do not forget. Um, but take a nice looking picture, put it on your social media. So if you've got a, a fair that goes for five days, post something about it every single day. Don't just do it once. Um, if, if you do not put it up there, all these people are gonna think that you're not active, and, and indeed you are. So make sure you get as much leverage as you can out of all of your hard work. Yeah. This is just people that you're having a good time and that they you might not have caught it that first day, but the next day, hey, we're still going to be doing this tomorrow. Come out and check us out, whatever. We're giving out free koozies. Come yeah, get the, yours. Yeah, to reinforce yeah. that. Yeah, it's wrong. Does the LP have some designated folks to be photographing this convention for future marketing? We do. Okay. I, I will just mention to the folks, because there's only a couple of Texans here, and I'm a former Texan. The images that were taken of the, of the uh, 2014 uh, Texas convention uh, in, uh, was it Waco or? Temple, 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 yeah. Um, were fantastic, and they ended up putting a year-end review book together. But, and I'm not a photographer, but I know the person who did that, uh, Denise, and, you know, there's a, I guess if you're a photographer, you know there's a, there's a science to it, but you want the right lighting, you want close-ups, you want tons of pictures, and as long as there's a professional group doing that, I know she wants that again for the, for the LP. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I take, that several of us probably take are crabby pictures and they're not the right kinds of pictures that go in a document. Anyway, I'm glad that that's being given some attention to because yes. I know what the benefit is. Yes, thank you, Rob. And, and absolutely, and that's, that's been part of my mission lately is making sure we adopt some of these same things the National Party. The 
point to from this, you can go out and hire a local photographer probably for 50 or 100 bucks. And it, it is really, really worth it. 100 bucks just to take photos seems like a lot considering we can all sit there and take photos. But to Rob's point, it pays off. It makes it look so much more polished and professional. And one of the problems our candidates, affiliates uh, all have, and even the national parties, we do not have a big file of photos to draw from when we're trying to put together websites or brochures and so on and so forth. They're put it on even social media. Um, so starting to build up a file that you have of good looking photos and make sure you tag them with the date because over time you will forget. Um, but build up this file and it will be one of your most precious resources over time. To Rob's point, you can do these year in review type documents that showcase things, but if you don't have photos, it looks pretty blah. You need the photos and you need good ones. So you can get a photographer for 50 to 100 bucks to do a really snazzy set of photos for you. Just make sure you get the rights, the digital rights. Sign a contract that says, we, the Libertarian Party of Smith County, get the rights to these photos and we're paid however much. That's very, very important or else you can end up in sticky. I have a quick question. Um, in your, your, I went to the digital media thing before this, and in your slide there, I can see in the Snapchat or Periscope. I have three uh, teenage daughters. Facebook is for old people. They, they're not, <laughs> none of their classmates do anything on Facebook. And that whole generation coming up is, it, Facebook is MySpace. And the other one is Periscope. And I know Rand Paul did a lot with Periscope with uh, live broadcasts. Are we doing any Periscope at this convention? No, we are doing some broadcasts. On what? Uh, we're, we have a, I can't remember what the channel is called. This is specific software. Um, I have to look it up for you. We can talk afterwards. One of the beautiful things about Periscope is you pull up a map of a city uh -huh. and it shows where the videos are coming from. So it, it, if you're just interested in what's going on, we'll be to go back over there. Yeah, that is pretty neat. I, I'm not an expert on that. Andy, do you have any? Just on Snapchat, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about the accounts, but if you go to lteaction.org slash social media, we have mm -hmm. more information on that. We put a video together on actually how to on that. So you can well, check we, it. we don't have Snapchat at this event because you go like, um, my, my kids went to the Hangout Fest down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and there was a Snapchat page of just video after video after video of people at the event posting stuff. And that's one of the ways that, that you get the word out about an event that's happened. I think one of our challenges is to make that productive. We would have to have a lot of people here doing that since it's a crowdsourcing thing. And if we put together, so for example, a page like that, and then there were only three people here uploading stuff and looking at our demographics, I mean, you know, if, if we had a lot of 19 year olds in the crowd. I'm thinking you use it for like the breakfast, the lunch, and things like that. Yeah. Especially Periscope. Well, let's talk more uh, after this. I appreciate that. It's very good feedback. Thank you. One thing we didn't cover is make sure you know that you got plenty of volunteers at your event. Uh, just re uh, going back before you actually go to your event, uh, Sign Up Genius is just an easy way. You can have a, an account up in minutes and set it up so people can easily sign up, and it makes the coordination a lot easier. Uh, this actually is for the LP store downstairs uh, starting tomorrow. So you can just create you know, exactly what schedule you want, how many people you want at that shift. Uh, you can actually send out an email to whatever your volunteer list or whoever you're targeting, saying here's the information, here's where to go, uh, can you help us? And if you got something signed up, it also sends reminders, so the day before they don't forget, so you actually get all your volunteers there rather than just a uh, percentage, because people will forget. Uh, you need they have to give them an emergency contact number too, so if something happens to them on the way or, or they can't get there, they know who to call. So you got yep. somebody coordinating how you're going to deal with that. Yep. Um, so, any other? Um, we're passing out a, a sheet right now that is tips and tricks for tabling intentionally. So it's, it has a lot of the stuff we've, we've talked about today and a few other useful nuggets. Um, please keep that. Uh, and uh, John had mentioned that in, in, for his tabling, uh, he has a big box that he keeps everything in. Add this to your box. If you want more, we have a few extras. Uh, take them home and give them to your volunteers and have them read it before the table. Discuss it with them, maybe have a little practice session um, because you want to have all of your team on the same page and doing things effectively. Uh, if you don't train your volunteers on these things, they won't do them. <laughs> um, Andy, got anything?
I was just going to say uh, a resource for all you guys that you can uh, use for your local uh, and state parties is lpaction.org. Um, if you go, it's got the little mobile thing here now, is if you go under marketing materials, it'll give you print, web, uh, just assets and collateral that you can easily use for your state party. Uh, if you need something customized that we've done for uh, some states already, just ask us, you can just contact us through the website. Um, so if you need uh, literature customized, uh, like this one shown back here, uh, easily just let us know and you can browse through this and see what's useful to you. But uh, yard signs, uh, literature, uh, t -shirt, all the t-shirt designs, button designs, you don't have to recreate this stuff because that doesn't make any sense to be inefficient. Is there a link uh, from lp.org to LP Action? Yes. Okay. If you go, um, hopefully we have a new site soon so it's even easier <laughs> than what I'll show you. But if you go under Action and then go to Affiliate Resources, then it'll take you there. Redirects and it goes there. We've really gotten a lot of use out of that. Uh, and, I mean, from just reinforcing branding, I mean, everything from letterheads, you know, and repurposing those so that it's, you know, uh, Libertarian Party of South Carolina, you know, instead of Libertarian Party of Connecticut, which is the template one of that, you know. And, I'm, I have a little bit of know-how with this stuff, so it's been pretty easy for me to sort of repurpose or rebrand that stuff myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it's it's certainly been a, a huge asset as far as that goes, and you know, from everything from that to uh, branding our Facebook, you know, icons and everything else, and pulling that stuff down from there and being able to work with it. So I appreciate what you've got with that. Good. If you're using it. Any other questions? You talked earlier about you know making sure you got the right shade of yellow and gray and you know for working on our own logos you know new state logos whatever. What state are you in? What's that? What state are you in? Montana. Okay. Um, do you have you know available like the definition? You know I don't know what it's called, but like the, the series of yes. numbers that defines yeah. that. Yeah, he's got it up on LPA. Just a little, uh, little preview graphic, but all basically the whole uh, you know statistical information on what's what, what colors are what. It's all right here. So you can just, I got a, we got a sheet that you can easily pull off. Actually, then these are actual files on here too. So you can, okay. you can pull the logo out there as um, so. well. And all of you will have graphic designers in your circles somewhere. You may need to hunt around a little bit, but they'll be there. And not all graphic designers are the same. Some are more experienced than others. Some use different software than others. But any graphic designer who knows anything about graphic design will know what all these color numbers mean, and they'll be able to plug them in spot and that is a very valuable person to have on your team uh, find a graphic designer or make them your friend uh, they will be one of your, your greatest assets for sure especially when you're trying to do branding trying to present this polished image uh, so do not do not underestimate the value of that did that answer your question yes anybody else I did a quick one. why are do we have this gray and yellow scheme what is the natural the National Committee chose it. The impetus, uh, the, you know, the reasoning behind that was yellow is always a prominent uh, libertarian color. Uh, it's always been that. Uh, a lot of uh, libertarian liberty organizations use it. The gray is between, it's basically the minarchist. Black, black and yellow are anarchists. So it's 50%. And that, so if you want to know the technical reason or that's why it's like it is, um, that's the reason is uh, it brings those two together. What's that? It does have its, it does have its challenges. So, so sometimes uh, you might need to adopt an accent color, and this this is one of the problems our designers. So Andy is a designer. He works with. I have a designer I work with. Um, Andy does more of the state stuff. I do more of this stuff. And not having a third color other than gray, white sort of counts as color, but but not but not having an accent color is tricky. You may want to adopt one, and you should. Talk with your graphic designer friend carefully before you choose one. Do not just go willy-nilly and say, oh, well, I think it should be green, and I'll just randomly pick this shade of green. It needs to be deliberate, and it needs to be thoughtfully uh, uh, chosen by somebody who has an eye for these things. Um, and if you want to do that, you can do it. Uh, I have to follow the standards that the, the National Party adopted, um, but you guys can nuance things however you want, but just be consistent with whatever you do, just be consistent, and it will look good. Um, it's when we start being inconsistent that it looks bad. Any other thoughts or questions?
I was going to say, it, this is a, sort of a side issue in the sense, um, because I'm a quilter and I'm really into color, I know that gray is a, a color that will clean the cones of your eyes. So if you're in an event that there's color everywhere, people are going to come and they're going to know why, but their eyes are going to look at the gray because it calms the eyes and makes them feel better. That's yeah. a very interesting point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, for the example that you were saying about bringing different colors in, you know, for South Carolina, the guys wanted to do something that was had a little more color, so we chose the South Carolina blue from the flag and used the state outline and put the, the torch eagle inside that. Uh -huh. You know, so it's still reinforcing the branding, but making it our own and giving it the South Carolina identity, but it's a really clean and simple way to do it. Yes. Uh, and it does bring a color to it that's outside of the gray, but it still uses the recognizable or really the, the icon of the logo. Uh, from the from the national branding, so. Well, one nice thing about the gray is it makes the yellow really pop. Yeah, it does. Um, and when and you go, too. Like yeah, complementary colors are. are Absolutely. Races. When you go um, into the, the the hall for the convention, the big hall, um, look at the podium sign. There is a whole lot of yellow, and if there's a whole lot of yellow there for a reason, because we want everybody to pay attention to that podium. We're very strategic with the yellow at this convention, and obviously this is our first big convention after adopting the branding, so we're going to be finessing it a little bit here and there. But you'll notice that most of our convention materials, like your convention book, it's yellow. Uh, it's all very deliberate uh, because we want it to match and we want it to be eye-catching. Um, so just think through the stuff. Like with the uh, this, this is yellow for a reason too. If this was gray, would that be too much gray? This, this table runner is $14 on Amazon, uh, and it's very lightweight. You know, a big bulky tablecloth takes up more space. It's more heavy to carry around. Little table runner, cheap, easy to carry around. Um, so just think through those details. Andy, you want to talk about your shirt success, and oh. then I think we'll need to wrap it up. Sure. Andy had great they, success selling shirts in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, we've done this at several events. State Fair recently, uh, 2015, is it? No? Uh, just going back to what's going to draw people in, what issues do they care about the Libertarian Party supports. Uh, so we sold $12,000 total. A lot of it was from shirts uh, with our branding on the back. And we sold, I don't know, 400 of these, a lot of them, uh, at 15, 20 bucks a piece, too. So uh, gaining people's support and. Can you gave them to people for a cheaper price if they put them on at the event, too, correct? Yeah, I mean, you make deals with people all the time. You know, it's. So it's, it's, it's a nice word actually, it's called price discrimination. Uh, how much is it worth to you? Uh, but really, and this one, another uh, very popular design that continues to be very popular, was uh, you know, in, with the NSA when that first came out with Edward Snowden. That was uh, one of the most popular shirts. But make deals with people, so if they want a shirt, you know, or if they just want a button, you know, okay, you know, well, we'll give you the button for free if you get a shirt. Um, give, give stuff away for free. It's like, don't nickel and dime people, you know. If, if they're gonna buy a high buck item, which it is, if they're at a fair, they wanna eat, they wanna go on some rides. Buying something from the Libertarian Party, it's not, the, unless they're a hardcore supporter, they're not gonna buy something from a political booth. That's not their first thing, it's gonna be their belly, that's gonna be the first thing. Uh, so make sure uh, you get, you know, always give people more than they expect. It's just it's a good model to go by. So if they buy a shirt, have some buttons, and if they have a group of friends there, it's always with kids, like, or you know, students, college uh, age, Give the whole, if one guy just wants them and he's the whole libertarian, give them all to the whole group, you know. Do things like that, that it, it costs you nothing, basically. And you're really getting a message out and you're gaining support from a lot of young people. And to the point about getting people to wear them around, so if, if you give them to people for a discounted rate if they wear them around, then you have all these walking billboards. Same as with the stickers, only it's even better because it's a shirt and it's a more prestigious thing people see it and then that helps generate business back to your table. Yep, they always come back and we always had where did you get that where'd you get that button? Where'd you get that shirt? And they end up coming right back to us. So great so, advertising. Great uh, great momentum. Yeah. Any final thoughts or questions? Okay. Well the takeaway lesson today is to table intentionally. Be specific to your group, be specific to your cause, be specific to whatever events you are, are doing, but make sure all your time, hard work and money are, are fulfilling the goals that are most important to you for that specific occurrence. There's no uh, right answer on any of this. It's about choosing what's most important and then following through to make sure you get the best bang out of it. But uh, yeah, post you. event on that as well, yes. that, which is the biggest. Yes. You know, everyone does the tailing, but that's always the biggest thing that is.
gets missed way too many times is either getting into your database and either getting in contact right away um, and then follow up contact after that. People are more important than money. People are the most precious resource yep. in politics. That contact data is far more important than any money yep. will raise. Raising money is very important too, but the people are the most important. So, so maximize that uh, as best you can. Yep. But thank sure. you all for coming today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.